Hello. Uh, thank you. And good afternoon. My name is Ryan Brembola. I want to thank everyone for having me today. Um, I'm going to go over a few things about faculty management and some uh, common theories you'll see with faculty management and online learning. And also, I'm going to talk about some common problems and solutions for those problems that are actionable. <clears throat> for this, I'm going to draw on um, some a bunch of research that I've done through scholarly journals and also from my own personal experience in this um, process. Um, so first of all, let's go ahead and talk about a couple things, some strategies and theory that might help. So first of all, a couple strategies. Um, studies have shown in multiple different studies that building a community with students and with faculty helps online learning to be more successful. Um, it can do things like alleviate the one of the bigger problems, which is isolation in the experience. Um, it can also help set higher expectations. As we all know, in traditional learning, high expectations are one of the big factors in student achievement, but it can be pretty hard to do that. So being able to set those higher expectations and get a one-on-one -on -one relationship and with the students is obviously going to set those expe expectations higher. Um, another problem is frequently people view online education as lesser form to traditional. So faculty um, needs to have that perception gone. It's just different. It's not lesser. And it actually has advantages in some aspects, such as you can um, work to students' different schedules things like that. And the same goes for faculty. So we need to make sure as administrators, we set that expectation. And also uh, another way to build community is to set professional learning communities among common teachers. So that way they can collaborate and talk together and not feel um, alone in their current practice. Um, another important thing is to set strong resources. So a database of resources that the teachers have access to is important. They can quickly reference in this way. They can know what they have ability to use. Frequently, teachers don't know what their um, their district or whatever their school has given them as a resource. And a lot of the resources just completely go unused. And these could be greatly useful to teachers. So a common database or a common location where they can go and see what's all access to them is great and also if these can be indexed by what use they're for even better um training too a lot of teachers have a problem obviously with uh, online systems when during covid for instance we were all thrown into it and we had to figure it out on our own so professional doubt uh professional development where staff can work with the new skills and materials or even filling gaps for ones that they don't know through differentiated professional development can be really helpful to fill in those gaps and raise the bar for everyone. Um, also, encouraging a culture of skill sharing where teachers can work with each other to figure out uh, what they know and what they don't know, just like we would in normal traditional classrooms, um, we can do in online as well. It's just we need to give them those tools to be able to collaborate with each other through either forums, virtual meetings, or things like that. Um, whichever meets their comfort level. So those are just a couple strategies to help flesh out um, an online culture more and build a community in those resources that the teachers need to help them be successful. Most of the time, they already have the abilities and knowledge that they need from traditional schooling, but they just need to be able to take it to that online platform. And they, they feel like it's a big gap these different strategies will help them realize that it's not, it's just slightly different, not um, a huge gap or a completely different thing. Um, one theory that I found in my research is the concept of a community and inquiry, which you can see in the previous slide as well. <coughs> this was uh, found through the research of Sun and Shin, and what they found was through looking at different uh, studies and their own study was that a uh, community of inquiry was one of the best methods for student achievement and teacher achievement in online learning. Um, this allows for higher order thinking, which is one of the concerns that teachers frequently have in online. 
And it also helps to build a community among the teachers and students. Um, there's basically three steps to this. So students will enter, enter these three steps when they're actively learning. So the first step is an incident of inquiry. This looks similar to uh, the scientific method, the first step of a hypothesis or engineering design process where students identify a problem. In this case, teachers will present with a problem, very similar, similar to project-based learning. And the students will look into that problem um, through the explore, which is the second step. They explore that concept, they learn more about it, and they, their actual goal is to find a resolution to whatever that incident of inquiry is. It could be a problem with uh, some sort of, uh, that needs a solution. It could be some sort of question that they're asking. So they have to find that. Um, there's also, uh, the, uh, through this, they're able to collaborate with other students and they explore together and learn together. So this actually ha increases what we call a social presence, a community among the children. And this has been shown in studies to create a higher cognitive presence. In other words, a higher level of learning in um, concept. Um, they do, you do have to have a teacher presence at the forefront of this though. So the students have to realize that the teacher is an active person in their class. So they can do this through, uh, social situations where you can have, uh, video conferences with the kids. You can have like seen in the picture, you can have other cases where the, they have a discussion forum where the kids are talking and the teacher's an active participant in that. And it doesn't have to be a lot. The kids just need to be aware that the teacher is there present and helping them and a resource to them. This teaching presence and the social presence, once they build, it leads to that higher cognitive presence. And it's shown to have a pretty strong success in online learning. Um, so here's some frequent problems and solutions that can go to them that you see in online learning. Now, first one, uh, a lot of teachers have fear that there's limited opportunities for understanding their learners and their learners needs. I've somewhat mentioned this previously, but I want to reemphasize this again. Uh, teachers feel that they're distance from distant from their students during online instruction and teachers struggle to find ways to connect with their students in meaningful ways, aside from just an email or maybe a quick call. They, they struggle with this. So here's some so actionable solutions. So uh, you can provide resources for video meetings. This could be Teams. This could be Zoom, something to that effect. Many LMS systems now have these built in. So that if you do have an LMS system, providing uh, opportunities to use that would be great. Um, model and help teachers develop collaborative groups with their students. So as a administrator, you can show them how this might work when talking to the teachers in this way. They can take that and also uh, collective training time so they can explore these options more and um, you can have them collaborate together so that way they can explore these tools more and how to effectively use them. Um, teaching load. A lot of teachers feel like teaching online is a bigger load than it would be normally. Um, this is a common perception. They're concerned that this impedes them uh, in their ability to do things. So a solution for that would be to ensure that teachers have access to tech support as quickly as possible to solve issues. This needs to be a collective database or some sort of forum where they know exactly where to go and what to do, and they can narrow down those issues and contact IT if they might need to as quickly as possible. Uh, we can also make sure that class sizes are at effective levels. We know that once you get to 30, 40 students, this is pretty unwieldy, especially on an online level. So maybe being able to manage those class sizes at much smaller levels would greatly help the teachers. And encourage collaborative work, like previously mentioned with the community of inquiry. If students are doing this, they're gonna have longer projects, but this way they can also work together and help each other to learn in this process. And you're just a guide on the side instead of directly um, guide holding their hand through the whole process so it frees up a little time for you but at the same time it also increases a lot of different areas of need um, professional learning communities also can help out so teachers can share knowledge and split work how they see fit and that can help greatly another problem is feeling of isolation what i've mentioned before the community of inquiry can really help this it's a common complaint um, teachers don't see ways to interact with other teachers sometimes and this can isolation effects can um, influence their teaching. <clears throat> Solution to this can uh, 
professional learning communities can be a great tool. This allows teachers to work together on things that they have a common interest in, and it provides a forum uh, for them to talk about shared experiences and information. Some teachers may not be comfortable with this, and a discussion forum can help or something of that effect as well. And then incentives, maybe have them have uh, bonuses tied to PD work or things like that can have or maybe find other incentives. Uh, we obviously can't do gene passes or anything like that, but other things such as maybe um, uh, special incentives can help. Um, learning management systems also can be daunting. So teachers complain that they limit what they can do and feel that they spend more time working on lessons in the learning management system than actually teaching. So a solution to this goes um, back to having a sufficient help section as a way to find help if needed. Um, this does not mean the help section in LMS. Those can be great, but we need someone more active. Um, PLC groups is another way to develop this. So this way they can work together to solve solutions. And then a teacher mentor program. So you have one teacher as a mentor and one less experienced paired up with them. So that way they can work back and forth and solve these problems, hopefully. Uh, better. Now, these are just a couple of the solutions. If you do have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'm here for help. There's my email. There's my phone number. I'm always happy to help. Anyway, thank you for having me today. I hope you uh, like my ideas and uh, let me know if you need anything else. Good day.